You're the co-founder of WordPress and the CEO of Automatic. I thought a good place to start would just be uh, a kind of little potted history of how you came to be the co-founder of WordPress um, and maybe a little bit about Automatic and, uh, and, and what Automatic does, uh, especially for those. I think we've got a, a sizable portion of the audience that's like not from the WordPress space. And so I think that'd be a good place to okay. lead us in. Um, yeah, how WordPress got started is, is long ago history. So. Uh... Uh, 20 years, more than 20 years ago, uh, I had started blogging uh, and tried a bunch of different software and became involved with uh, an open source one in PHP that was called B2, basically, B2 Cafe Log. And uh, it was some of my first open source code contributions. And I was active in those forums and and uh, a community member, a contributor. Um, the project, uh, got abandoned essentially like the the lead developer it only had one lead developer and they disappeared um for a little while and so just wondering what to do like many other community members and so I, I made a blog post about it called the blogging software dilemma and the one and only comment <laughs> was from another developer and contributor mike little um uh, who you'll get to see later really awesome gentleman um we we had never met in person, you know, but we knew each other online. Uh, very different backgrounds. I was in the UK. I was a kid in Texas. I was like, you know, I think I was 19. He might have been like 30 something or 42 or something. So, but we didn't really know all that. We knew each other by our usernames and our code. And we began working together on what would become later be known as WordPress. And it was... Um, very modest <laughs> at the time. Like we didn't really have any or many users or anything, but um, it... in open source software as being something really important um, mm -hmm. in web standards. So, you know, code that was interoperable. Um, we had a tagline code is poetry. <laughs> So uh, just idea that code could be beautiful as well, and that we should think about that as we iterate uh, with the various changes we were making. And uh, yeah, then we were off to the races. I had some really cool code called B2 Links that was like a plugin. Before plugins existed, we brought it in. Like, it was really fun. And still is really fun, actually. Awesome. Um, very cool. I was also in the kind of uh, a follower in the web standards movement. That was kind of the era, era I, uh, I, I got into. Uh, to, to web design, I guess, as I called it back then, and then later web development. Um, and uh, remember Matt in the UK community, you know, uh, uh, as, as that was uh, um, becoming a thing in the UK and uh, uh, being inspired by the work he was doing and, and uh, uh, by WordPress, uh, I guess, at that time. Um, if you want to hear more about that, by the way, uh, Mike um, and I were able to get together earlier in the year, actually with the founder of Drupal. And wow. so if you just search Mullenweg, Mike Little, and Drees, you'll find that video out there. <laughs> yeah, I can really recommend that. It was a really, uh, it was a really cool, unique moment to be able to see that conversation. Um, OK, and so you you, you, you co-founded WordPress with Mike Little, and that grew from being a blogging platform and into a CMS and into uh, kind of the, one of the dominant platforms of the web today. Um, and along the way, I guess you founded also a, a company called Automatic. Um, so maybe you can just talk a little bit about um, Automatic and I guess uh, its role and, and, and what Automatic does. Yeah, so uh, that was when I was 19, call it about a year, year and a half later. Mm -hmm. I visited San Francisco for the first time and um, started to get some job offers uh, from Google, Yahoo, like, you know, I got to visit all those companies. And um, and one was a company, a media company called CNET. So I ended up dropping out of college, convincing my parents, went yet west, young man, <laughs> and I joined CNET. And uh, but once in the San Francisco scene, like uh, it was very very vibrant at that time because it was kind of post dot com crash, and mm. so folks who were in it just for the money had all left. <laughs> That's a nice time. Oops, sorry, it froze for a second there for me. And um, and it was really folks passionate about web standards, you know, folks like Tom Tekchelik or I'd run into Craig Newmark at a cafe, mm. <laughs> the founder of Craigslist and just different folks. And um, so after about a year of that job, um, 
decided to uh, leave and found Automatic. Um, some some starts and <laughs> and, and stops uh, in those early days for sure. I was very you know inexperienced, but was able to raise some mm -hmm. venture capital funding. Uh, bring on some you know great partners like Tony Schneider, who would uh, later become the CEO of Automatic. And um, yeah, so that was I think seventeen or eighteen years ago now. Um, over the years, Automatic expanded from doing the first part of it was a Kismet anti spam. Then we moved into WordPress.com. Um, and then much later, uh, I, when I turned 30, I became CEO. So Tony passed the baton over. And then I think the following two years later, we moved into e-commerce with WooCommerce acquisition and, um, you know, some other fun ones along the way, like day one, which is amazing encrypted journaling app, a cast, which is a podcasting clients, which we've now open sourced actually. And we're really trying to push forward like podcasting standards and the uh, innovate on the UI there outside of kind of the Spotify, Apple duopoly. So a lot mm -hmm. of varies. I'm spending most of my time today. Oh, we bought Tumblr. <laughs> that's a big uh, one. That's a big one. Uh, that's over half a billion Tumblr's <laughs> accounts. So it's wow. like, just, we're going to switch to WordPress. So that'll become open source too. Um, wow. Kind of our stick is just making everything open source, but also trying to make it a sustainable business at the same time. Um, but I think the sort of check and balance of being open source means that you remain very customer centric, privacy centric. Mm -hmm. Customers always have control and ownership of their data. And um, so, you know, besides some of the Tumblr work I've been doing, I've been just really obsessed with AI for a few years. <laughs> kind of since. Well, that's perfect. <laughs> um, that's well, I mean, that's kind of why we're here today, right? Yeah. And um, and it's just been a very uh, exciting time. Probably the most fun I've had in technology, kind of maybe since the early days of WordPress when we were coding yeah. everything or myself. And like you know, uh, so that's been really fun. And then also, you know, my mom's in San Francisco right now while we're doing some construction in Houston, where we're normally based. And um, so I've been spending a lot more time in San Francisco, and it's definitely you know the mecca of AI stuff in a lot of ways. Sure. There's, so much just literally every night of the week there's an ai event wow a lot of the folks driving it particularly like a, a year or two ago it was a very small community of the mm. a few others and um and so yeah it just it's kind of exciting being in san francisco again like kind of post crash in some ways a lot of folks that left they went to miami and austin and new yeah. york and leaving san francisco beyond san francisco is having some challenges just from a city mm point of view would be a way to put it but the uh the ai stuff is like it's back <laughs> you know cool. it's back. Totally back. that's nice i mean uh, yeah a nice an opportunity for a san francisco renaissance too i suppose if, uh, well it's I just you know it's a shelling please. point for or like a focal point for folks i think really passionate about technology and yeah. just like you know new york could probably always be that for finance la for entertainment right. Um, I'm sure there's as many other examples. Sure, there's. I'm sure there's some others uh, in in the UK. I don't know if that, I don't know of what that would be off the top of my head. Um, uh, okay, well, well um, world capital for a while. That's true. That's definitely true. Uh, I'm not really a city guy. I, I'm I'm more of a country bumpkin, so uh, I'm not so great at the not so great at the city stuff. Um, I, want, I definitely want to get into this AI stuff. I kind of want to start with open source, though, because um, I mean, I think that that is a, a really important aspect of this uh, like AI revolution. Um, and I think it's something that we can hopefully explore a bit today. You said some pretty bold, large statements about open source. Uh, and uh, I guess it's important to you, importance to you. I think you've called it a fundamental human right uh, at times. And uh, I think you've uh, said it's perhaps the most powerful idea or one of the most powerful ideas of your lifetime. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's perhaps something you've made, you know, you've made your life's work. Um, and uh, I think along with AI, you called it a mega trend of like the next 30 years. Um, so I wanted, I guess I wanted to just to hear from you like a bit of an expanded uh, explanation of just like why 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 do you think open source is is like such a powerful idea that you've decided to dedicate your 
uh, your life to it and and the work that you're doing and and automatic in some ways you know one of the um bastions of the open web i think you know served a pretty important role through this last uh, this last era of the web where um uh, that's not been that's not been the case but, uh, elsewhere. Um, so yeah, talk just talk a little bit about the kind of power of open source as as, uh, as you see it. Yeah, um, the I'm a big believer in sort of uh, freedom and liberty and autonomy and things like that. Mm -hmm. And when we think about our digital lives. Um, like the percentage of our life, which is influenced by our technology, is expanding, you know, like 20, 30 years ago, <laughs> you know, your car didn't have a computer in it. Um, you might look up things in like a yellow pages, <laughs> right? Right. There was like, those are forms of technology actually, but like not the digital technology. But now when you think about it, pretty much your whole life is mediated by often a smartphone and and we don't always think about this, but now like more than half of all new couples meet online because <laughs> what they're meeting through. There's an algorithm there, <laughs> right? So the yeah. algorithm is literally choosing how we're going to evolve as a species because it's pairing, you know, who becomes uh, mates. Um, when you go someplace, right, the maps tell you which route to take and mm. they might suggest things along the way or like when you search for something, um, of course, you know, how much of the world economy is driven by search and advertising. Uh, so typically, in fact, all those things I said, I'm not aware of great open source versions of them. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yet. <laughs> yet. Uh, yeah. So something that just I believe is really important um, is for people to be able to have full ownership of their uh, their technology stack even if they never dig into the code <laughs> or they never use it. Um, just having that sort of what I call digital bill of rights, mm. um, you know, open source, particularly the GPL, which, uh, which WordPress community uses, um, provides that. Now, why does this interact with AI? Um, well, uh, one, I think we've seen the open source side of AI or open-ish things. You know, obviously, Llama is not open source. Sure. That's what they called it. But um, progress way faster than anyone expected. You know, when OpenAI right. started releasing, like for me, GPT-3 was like a big kind of breakthrough moment. Um, Dolly, remember when that came out, the image generator? Yeah. And we're like, oh, I was like, man, they're, they're years ahead of everyone else. Sure. And it turned out, you know, the Anthropics of the world, but also the Stable Diffusion and Midjourney and like other folks started not just catching up, but surpassing in so many ways. Um, and then what people started to do, like when the early Facebook stuff leaked, I mean, folks were literally going around San Francisco with USB drives with those leaked weights. <laughs> sure. And all of a sudden, yeah. how people were adapting it to run on like an M2 Max laptop with like pretty good token speed. Um, mm. It This sort of stuff just moved really, really quickly. Um, they, you know, companies, uh, I have a, a friend, um, Kanjin, who founded something called uh, General Intelligence. They just renamed it, but they went from like founding a few years ago. They're doing like an agentic approach to sort of AGI creation. Um, the idea that you put these things in, like little virtual worlds that's part of embodied okay. intelligence, which could lead to artificial general intelligence. Um, you know, they just raised like a billion dollar round or something. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous <laughs> how fast these Crazy. things are moving. Yeah. Is that like I thought that was interesting to to see the pace at which um, these kind of open source teams were able to move and like I thought it was a little bit counter to like a criticism you hear sometime of open source that like it's kind of slow at the innovation stuff and maybe proprietary innovates a little bit quicker open source kind of takes over over time and yet like I feel like we kind of haven't seen that particularly with stable diffusion like the image stuff uh is you know leapt ahead so quickly and like it's true gpt4 still seems like it's got a lead you know um perhaps in in, in terms of like its raw capability but the proliferation speed that that open source stuff moved uh really seemed to surprise everybody i, I wonder whether that surprised you whether you think there's something 
specific about you know the kind of ai or the moment we're in that that's meant that that innovation has been just like so fast well i think a lot of the folks who work in ai um are driven or idealistic as well mm. so and there's even like some game theory <laughs> around it not unlike um you know many folks in the community liken it to nuclear weapons which i don't think yeah. is the best analogy but sure. you know, if you look at the Manhattan Project, like they felt like other countries should have this as well, <laughs> to like sort of be a balance of powers. So the folks yes, working, the scientists there, wanted to collaborate, you know, even if the countries didn't, you know, or or they didn't want one organization or one country to have a balance mm. of power that was so far ahead of the others. And so I've heard some of this with companies mm. and orgs as well as part of the reason. You know, they don't want just one AGI. They feel like for a balance of that company or work would be too powerful. <laughs> That's how this gets into sci-fi stuff. And I don't know if I would sure. fully agree with it. So the different takeoff scenarios of like uh, super intelligence, but um, yeah, I think that's also part of the game theory for why mm -hmm. some of these Great. folks in the community, you know, publish papers still, you know, which is, you know, a form of open data sharing. Right. Well, I think it's going to be really important, particularly for companies building on AI is yeah i mean have you all noticed that like gpt4 has gotten like worse <laughs> yeah for sure that that's like a, a you know uh seems to be a, a something people are like noticing but unsure about i don't i don't i don't think open ai have been clear about whether that's like the case or not um, um yeah. my theory there is that uh they're having to remove data from it so mm. they would be like kind of liberal and how they trained it with lots of data sources. Sure. And as you know, GPT, Chat GPT really woke the world up. OpenAI went from being seen as like a research organization to kind of a tech giant, you know, and mm. certainly the alignment with Microsoft. I, I hear them spoken now in the same breath as like Apple, Google, Microsoft, mm. you know, Meta. Um, yeah. so the mm. uh I, so I think they're having to remove data just from like a, a legal liability point of view, because you know, sure. book authors are suing them. You know, there's, and you could do some queries that appear that it had some, right? What I'll call like maybe still in copyright data used as part of the training set. And all of the the big AI folks are very secretive and dicey about what they use to train. <laughs> sure. Yeah. And there's like, been a bit of an arms race between like, you know, people crafting prompts to, uh, to, to, uh, e e I guess, explore the, the space there and discover stuff. And then the, uh, the likes of open AI having to figure out how to, oh God, we don't want that happening. We better, yeah. Remove yeah. that data or whatever. Yeah. So why hmm. is this important for, for open source is, um, particularly until the case law is figured out for the big kind of hyper cloud AI providers. I think they're going to become much more conservative about um, what data is in there. But companies who are implementing, and they don't even need to be like these super large multi-trillion token LLMs, like some of the small LLM work is, um, is just really, really interesting. Um, yeah. And then combined with their own data sources for embeddings or fine tuning, which again is getting so much easier, including with open AI stuff. I think it's part of why they've been, been investing in this or plug-in mm -hmm. art which are very clearly going to be, I mean, right now it's really a uh, chat GPT thing, but everyone's going to support some equivalence of AI calling out to other services. Um, that's really, really going to be really, really important. So some, some more bring your own data stuff. And then two, because you asked like why I say open AI, I'm sorry, open source and AI are the big mega trends. Mm. If, if you haven't played with this stuff much, um, check out the code interpreter uh side of chat gpt and just the ability of probably one of the best data sets that the ais have been trained on is all the open source code in the world <laughs> yeah. and guess what they're under licenses that they're allowed to do so and so you know i remember the first time someone was like i just asked chat gpt and it wrote a wordpress plugin and my jaw dropped i was like mm -hmm. what? but then it made so much sense because it's read all of our code and the code of all 55,000 you know, plugins right. in the directory, right? And all so the documentation and uh, everything, yeah. 
yeah, I mean, when you think of the countless, I don't even know the count anymore, but you know, the tens of millions of lines of code in the WordPress.org repositories, um, that's really powerful. And so like, in terms of like a developer productivity or augmentation of what we're doing in, uh, you know, developers around WordPress, where you're developing like core or, you know, developing things for clients, this can be really, really, really powerful. And also just, um, I would say that, you know, sometimes the chat GPT can get kind of confused or hallucinates or mm -hmm. sometimes has trouble with like basic math or something like that. When it's speaking in English, when you ask it to write code around something or give it code, um, mm. it's much more sort of the logical part of it works a ton better. And this is very, 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 very exciting. Uh, the final thing I'll say here, because um, like, uh, I really want people to be playing with this stuff and working on it. I've, I've in 20, I think 14 or 15, I told the WordPress community to learn JavaScript deeply. Now, and now the only other time I've asked the WordPress community to learn something deeply was I think state of the word last year, um, which was I think seven days before chat GPT came out. And I said, please learn AI deeply because I feel like this is going to be the most important thing. So again, back to the point, um, using um, AI tools to scan for like security vulnerabilities or code improvements, switching code between, um, oh, I bet you, um, switching code in between uh, different languages. I think this is going to become more and more powerful in really exciting ways. Not, it was nice to have Petra for a moment there. Uh, I'm not sure whether that's a sign that we're learning from <laughs> time. <laughs> Was, just some good stuff. Let's just call it. Let's just call it like a time a timekeepers uh, thing, okay. and not a, a glitch timekeepers system. intervention. <laughs> right. Sorry, uh, right. sorry, folks. Uh, please keep going. Don't mind me. Okay, okay, good stuff. Uh, we're 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 doing this live, everybody. So you'll excuse uh, a few technical uh, learnings along the way. Um, I mean, uh, like something that's pretty exciting for me, I guess, with this like platform shift that it seems like we're going to go through with AI is that like, it, I feel like the last couple of platform shifts haven't been that like open source native or friendly. And like, you know, w WordPress has done, I think pretty well, you know, like uh, e even despite that, you know, but um, but even so, I'm not sure that those, you know, that like kind of centralized platforms and, you know, perhaps like wordpress.com uh, SaaS version of, of WordPress, like was, uh, yeah. you know, that that was really helpful in that platform shift. But it, again, it's not like a kind of native blowing winds in the sails of, of open source and mobile, like it's a little awkward to be open source on the on the app stores and, and apps like that's never really felt great from an open source point of view. Whereas this AI platform shift just feels like uh, it it can blow actually like wind in the sails of of uh, of uh, uh, an open source project like like WordPress, which yeah, I guess that just feels pretty exciting. Um, I wonder as you. I guess like we look a little bit further ahead. Like I feel like one of the questions we've got at the moment, you know, there's a lot of like ways in which it's quite clear that AI can be integrated into the jobs that people are doing in WordPress at the moment. Um, uh, but as we look further ahead, like it see, also seems clear that that some of those jobs are not going to be relevant anymore at some point, right? Like, there's also going to be some disruption. Do we need a CMS to do the things it does today in an AI world? What you know? What do those things look like further out? So I wonder if you've got any kind of sense, or you know, the things you're thinking about that are kind of more disruptive, or perhaps change some of those things in a larger way. Um, and then, yeah, you know, I, I want to touch on some of that shorter term opportunity as well. I think that is, you know, that's how we're going to get to that that future. But um, I don't know. In in a couple of years, when we're in a bit more of an AI native web, and and there's like native WordPress or something like what do you think that starts to look like huh. I I think generally with technology there's a trend you know of what you know actually WordPress as far as I know was one of the first to call democratization in this context mm. so we mm. WordPress mission is to democratize publishing if the progress of WordPress itself on Gutenberg means that today someone with pointing and clicking and not a ton of tech info can make a site, a beautiful site, and customize it exactly how they want, where five years ago, they would have needed to know CSS. And 
you know, 20 years ago to build some of these things that you can, yeah, you know, there's that fun video, create techcrunch.com in 30 minutes or something, yeah. the pool trusted. And um, obviously just the demo, but like, you know, it's kind of, we forget this, but what WordPress does out of the box, you know, 20 years ago, you would have spent millions of dollars on in something like Sitecore or, yeah. you know, hiring a smart agency like HumanMade who would have had to create a lot of things from scratch. So yeah. um, we're, we're getting millions of dollars of, so someone back then might be, well, will there be CMS developers in the future? <laughs> you right. know? Um, even though something like WordPress is this, of course, <laughs> in fact, there's more than ever because yeah. these things typically create more demand as well. Um, so mm. specifically AI, I'm seeing, you know, people who might not have had the ability to like do code or other things like that, they're getting enhanced, right? They're able to maybe create things or learn things that they couldn't before. You know, I love the education side of AI and the personalized tutor side. Um, man, it works so well as an editor mm -hmm. <laughs> and like rewriting things. It's actually one of the first things we integrated. So we put some, um, some GPT stuff into Jetpack AI. So there's a module you can enable on Jetpack now that integrates fully with Gutenberg. And one of the fun things there is you can like select a block or a paragraph and say, change the tone of this, make it more humorous, make it more formal, make it more, and just like stuff that would be almost unimaginable before. Um, yeah, I saw someone are you um, are you seeing much usage of those of those things? I wonder, like what 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 that's telling you about what you know wh which of those uh, things are like resonating with people and and uh, uh, are going to become you know features, and which of them are like us in this early stage figuring out it's cool to do, but but isn't necessarily something that's going to last. I wonder if you're starting to make a sense of that. The current iteration is. A lot, it's like a better version of Grammarly or Jasper or yeah. something like that. So it's really, I would say more like working within the block mm -hmm. <laughs> is a Gutenberg was right within I... the document editor. Um, what I think is going to get really exciting next is when we have the ability of um, these AI co-pilots to manipulate the blocks themselves or mm. change on your sites. Um, so that it can essentially, just like it can easily modify text, modify your site how you ask it to. Um, yeah. So I don't think we're super far from this. It's it's a lot harder than it sounds. But the point, and there's already some like demos of this and other things where you can say like, you know, make me a, a site that looks like this other one, but uses blue instead of green and you know bring in some jazzy photographs and or then you yeah. can say hey can you can you make everything kind of like sepia toned and they can go in and use the duotone filters and and uh in gutenberg hey can you like try out some typography that feels like a little bit more like you know the economist or like you know you could say things like that something that yeah. again used to have to be a conversation with a developer and then the developer would sure. have to spend a lot of time or the designer a lot of time actually implementing it. That stuff will be able to happen in seconds. Um, yeah, now yeah. you can try out a hundred versions of that rather than, you know, whereas before maybe you've got to pay for every iteration or something or every experimentation. Now you can do 20 and pick your favorite. I, I would say also that I think that might be the future of agencies or designers as well, mm. where before you might present a mock-up or two or three, like mm. maybe you go into that client meeting with like 20 <laughs> or 30 that took you yeah, the same right. amount of time. And sure. then you can kind of do some, you know, that sort of client development process as people are choosing something can just be a lot more, uh, a lot more visual or a lot more real because again, you could maybe even spin up 20 demo sites using something right. like WordPress Playground. Which is another cool thing, tech that's coming up at the same time. If you haven't checked out Playground, um, just Google that, check it out. Basically, we can now run all of WordPress, including the database and plugins and everything, fully within the browser, spins up within seconds. That can be embedded on the mobile apps or Raspberry Pis or like all this other really, really cool stuff. So it actually weirdly moves WordPress to being like an engine for applications that were previously unimaginable. Mm, cool stuff. Um, 
like one th one thing I'm wondering, you know, the moment all of these tools that we're building, you know, that most of them are using an open AI API on the back end. Um, and I guess parallel, we've got all this open source experimentation happening in these other models. Like at what point, you know, and I think there's some challenges there, right? How how do we how do we bring an open source model into uh you know something like wordpress um is not so clear I, w I wonder how you're thinking about that you know what 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 the opportunities are there um what when do we get to the point where we're you know we're building a cms but we're also uh i guess contributing or or, or uh embedding open source models like within that yeah it's a good question um Right now, all the best stuff is, you know, calling like the AIs, uh, sorry, the APIs, like yeah. Anthropics, uh, Open AIs, I think being the two best. But the Llama stuff, you know, where you can run it yourself is pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, based on the interpretation of 700 million MAUs, we could definitely put some of that stuff on WordPress.org and run it as a service. Mm. Um, I think, you know, the way these models are with the current generation of like CPUs and GPUs, you need a pretty beefy machine yeah. to run it at like an acceptable token speed, uh, much sure. less if you were serving like, you know, an API that is called to millions of WordPress sites. Um, so, mm. you know, my M2 Max in 96 gigs of RAM <laughs> laptop, which was like, you know, $6,000 or something can do it. But, you know, if you're on like a, 10 or even $25 a month hosting accounts. Sure. Like you're not gonna have the resources or even like these servers don't even have like GPUs most of the time. Right. And um, you know, they don't have Apple Silicon or this other. Um, so right now- I mean, I wonder, do we need to see some of these open source models paired with like a commercial operation that, uh, you know, I guess, yeah, helps with some of that access. Um, I think, for at least for the next few years, unless there's some breakthroughs from like AMD or Intel, yeah, sort of like run things in the same way that NVIDIA stuff can now, mm -hmm. we're probably going to see this as like web services. Um, yeah. A cool thing for WordPress is we do run some pretty interesting web services on WordPress.org. And so I could definitely imagine just things we're doing already being enhanced, like related plugins, plugin mm. reviews and analysis, um, you know, supports like you know we have our support forms we have our docs but like you know could we embed you know some form of like a word wordpress chat box um i think this is a really oh, yeah. wow. opportunity to uh to bring wapu more into people's lives <laughs> I'll bring, I'll bring some AI into wapu i love it <laughs> right now, how, how kind of funny would that be if like you talk to wapu to get like wordpress support or to modify a plugin um, so it's like the... I think it's pretty doable. <laughs> Actually, the costs are not so yeah. big, you know, because we already spend seven figures a year just on WordPress.org infrastructure. So this would not be too bad um, to add on there. And um, and then of course, like commercial folks can either you know call the open AIs or something like that. There is some precedent as well for when we've sort of integrated an ability to call a commercially hosted thing, kind of like yeah. fonts or something like that. Um, so that's definitely some, we have some precedent for that as well. We're, we're a very pragmatic project, right? So I would say we're like pretty hardcore about open source ideals, but I think just have a real realization that sometimes the path there might not be ideologically pure on day one, but we can always have an arcing towards that. And we can be really strict as well about like user choice, transparency, everything like that. Just by how the code and the community works. Awesome. Okay, I could keep talking and asking more questions, but I know uh, we, we've got Mike Little waiting in, in the wings for his session. Um, maybe just a thing to end on then, like I think something you've said consistently is the importance of people like playing with this stuff and figuring it out and uh, getting familiar with it. Like half of that, half, feels like half of the job there is like a kind of conceptual uh, onboarding to even what's possible. Maybe you can just share a couple of like the best things you've read or the best places you're going to, you'd recommend to people to go and uh, um, start playing around if they're not already doing so. Yeah, so things I would recommend. 
Um, I recommend watching the state of the word this year. <laughs> in a few months, I think we're doing that. Great in, uh, I think we're doing that in December, but I'll, I'll have to check. Um, Exclusive reveal. <laughs> <laughs> I recommend checking out the Simon Willison talk from WordCamp US. Uh, mm -hmm. That should be on WordPress.tv. Um, that one was super excellent. Um, yeah, other a great blog to follow as well, actually. Yeah, uh, you know, for better or worse, Twitter. <laughs> you know, following some of the folks in this, like the Sam mm -hmm. Altman's of the world. Um, my my Twitter, I'm posting a ton of AI stuff. I'm at Photomat, P H O T O M A T T. Um, I'm posting actually a lot, and then like you'll see me retweet a lot of the academics. So mm -hmm. do you want to go into this, like reading the papers themselves and following the academics? Um, is really like a way to stay, I would say, up on the state of the art. Um, mm -hmm. If if you're looking for more practical applications, I would say there's some good newsletters and like websites that list out all the AI tools. I don't have one on the top of my head, but like I'm sure y'all could recommend one later. Just like, yeah, we could recommend some later. Or, or I think y'all should probably have some resources around this as well. Like maybe put we'll put some stuff, stuff out. I for sure, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Um, and but just think of it kind of like if you were following sports. <laughs> like if you're really into basketball or cricket or something like you you would maybe spend like a little bit of each day just kind of scan the headlines zooming in on one mm. or two i'd recommend if you're in technology to start doing that for ai stuff scan the headlines you know and then dive into a few things that interest you just so you can sort of get that ambient knowledge because this is you ask what jobs are going away i would say that um if you want to stay at the top of the field, you're going to need to really know how to leverage and and work with AI. So, does <laughs> any of y'all like you know, don't want to go and become like a farmer or, or a baker or something? Which some people right. do want to leave technology. Some, some, some people want to learn yeah. how to embrace the stuff. Just like it's like was useful to learn how to type. <laughs> it's, it's like that basic. Awesome. Hey, folks! I'm really, really sorry to interrupt, Tom. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm a bad timekeeper and a good talker. You're so not a you're great mix. excruciatingly bad timekeeper, uh, and uh, our next one of our next speakers has a hard stop, so we really need okay, to go to my that bad. session. This is uh, this is a exciting conversation. I hope to see this continue in some way, and uh, to just like hear your thoughts, both of your thoughts on uh, future WordPress and AI. Thank you so much, both of you, uh, for uh, this exciting talk. Unfortunately, we don't have time. There are some. There were some questions uh, that were asked in the session, which, um, if you're keen, you can still still stay in the session and take a look and answer in the chat. They're on the right in the Q and A section, uh, and you can read them and also maybe take a look at the chat. And there, there were some really great questions posted in there as well. But for now, thank, thank you, you very much. A question i'm happy to answer it on twitter as well so i just posted my oh you know, there you go perfect. perfect all right thanks, thanks very, very much, much. Really uh, both of you thank you matt thank you tom bye bye do we just leave or do you like take us off stage or something i have to uh, finish the session so i'm gonna okay. end the broadcast okay <laughs>